Okay, Terry and Margaret have celebrated 59 years of marriage this uh, coming week. They got married on the 29th, and uh, so they're going to celebrate it on Tuesday on the 28th. So uh, they want to have a little skit to kind of celebrate their uh, wedding anniversary. Go ahead. Just my guy, I want you to know. And most of the time, he's a real good joke. But he does have his days when he's an owly old guy. <laughs> and living with me, I just don't know why. Things ain't always all that great. But I'll keep him, because it's a little too late. <laughs> his back being aching and his knees don't bend. His moaning and groaning, there's just no end. <laughs> but we fell in love when we were just 16. I played skinny and he real lean. I fell in love with his dark, curly hair. <laughs> but 60 years later, that hair ain't there. Well, we would just stare in each other's eyes, thought for sure that we were in paradise. But now, bifocals get in the way, and the color of our eyes, we can't even say. Love was great with just us two, but then along came, you know who, three little girls with lots of curls, then the boys and all the noise, weddings and grandkids, and the years flew by, just no time for me and my guy. But I still love it when he gives me a grin, because we don't know what shape we're in. Still get a shiver from the twinkle in his eye. Because the truth be known, I still love that guy. <laughs> so if you're young and love is brand new, here's a lesson on what to do. Just love your woman and love your man and make each day count as much as it can. Because time goes by and years get spent and then you'll wonder where the gusto went. Don't you ever make a fuss, cause sure as soon shooting, you'll end up like us. <laughs> well, there's my man. There he sits. It's all there is. It's all I get. <laughs> okay. Thank you so much, Terry Murder. That was great. <laughs> Good reminders. Ah, uh, let's pray. Father, we thank you so very much for your wonderful goodness to us, for all your blessings, and for your word. Help us as we look into your word that it be a fresh word for our lives this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, I'm going to take a break, and I was going, thinking all month of talking about marriage, but uh, I just felt that I was supposed to go a little different direction today, and I probably will not go back to marriage next week. We'll see. I have no idea what I'm going to be preaching on. But uh, a couple of weeks ago, in fact, February 6th, the whole world's focus turned towards Turkey and Syria as that huge earthquake hit, 7.8 earthquake hit that area. Uh, they had another one shortly thereafter, almost as big, and then this past week they had a, a third major one there. Um, I'm not sure what the count right now. I think uh, 40, I heard 45,000 earlier this week uh, people have dead. I think it's uh, probably 48 or maybe even 50,000 now. But so much damage and so many hurting people, and most people lost everything. You know, they were happy to get out of the house with uh, just their lives. So, um, you know, it's a real serious matter. Well, I'm going to share a few thoughts about earthquakes this morning from the Word of God, because the Bible says a lot about earthquakes. And um, I know for our uh, area here, we don't get many earthquakes. Uh, for years, we had earthquake insurance on our church. We do not now. The company we're with now does not offer it. The company we were with at that time did not offer it either. But they said for $20 a year, we'll put earthquake insurance on for you. <laughs> but the Bible talks about being in all sorts of different places, earthquakes, in the end times. And so that's why we put it on. But we don't have it right now. How, how many have been in the earthquakes? Ever? 
Yeah, you were in California. California. Hmm? Mm -hmm. Okay, um, I, I was in one in Mexico one time, and uh, it wasn't a bad one. I uh, in the airport at Acapulco, walking down the big area there, and I just I thought oh, I'm getting sick. I can't, you know, just kind of wheezy and uh, and. Uh, I wondered what I ate. Of course, down in Mexico, you never know what you're eating. But uh, it turned out to be an earthquake. And the whole thing was just going like this, uh, the uh, Acapulco Airport. Anyway, uh, so uh, I don't admire people that are in earthquakes because I know some people have really had a lot of fear because of it. So, so we're going to talk a little bit about that this morning. Point number one on your outline has nothing to do with earthquakes, okay? <laughs> uh, Matthew 24, and I'm going to start in verse uh, 3, where the disciples are asking Jesus, what sign will signal your return in the end of the world? And then in verse 4, Jesus told them, don't let anyone mislead you. And then in verse uh, uh, five, they will, uh, there will be false messiahs, they will deceive many, and you will hear wars and rumors of wars. These things must take place, nation will go against nation, kingdom against kingdom, and there will be famines. I want to start with famines, because Jesus warned of famines. Famines often go with earthquakes and wars, and talk about famines, worth earthquakes and wars in this whole area right here. Uh, I think we're seeing a lot more war uh, going on, and we're going to, because of, especially in the Ukraine, we're going to see more and more famines. Now, a lot of you remember, some of you don't, back in the 60s and 70s, remember how many people were dying of famines? They're talking about famines all over the place. You know why that quit and what stopped all those famines? The production of GMO uh, food. GMO uh, corn and other things, uh, uh, modified food. Now, it's interesting, uh, that's what really has stopped it because it, we can produce so much more food with a whole new thing. The problem with that is, uh, is that food any good for you? Uh, a lot of people say no. Let me, I don't know if I shared this with the church, I've shared with a few people. Uh, uh, my brother uh, was telling me uh, did I share this with the church here? No, okay. Uh, down there, and he said, that I asked him uh, at hunting season, do you, do you have many deer around? Did you get, they didn't get many deer. He said, we don't have deer around anymore. They all went over the next valley. And I said, what, why? He says, uh, we plant G, uh, GMO corn, and the deer won't touch it. Our neighbor in the next valley over there, they plant the old fashioned corn, and they got deer galore over there. Now, does that tell you something about the GMO corn? Okay, uh, we uh, we had a deer come right up to the house this past week, and uh, looking for food, and he looked right in, and thought, "Well, I'm going to take. I got some cracked corn I use for the rabbits. I'm going to take some out and throw it out there." And uh, he hasn't been back. I have a feeling he didn't like my GMO corn, and so. Uh, Anyway, I threw some apple slices out last night. Maybe it'll come now. So, anyway, I feel it's bad for all the animals right now because there's so much, uh, you know, it's so hard to get around. Anyway, that, that's just point one. I wanted to bring it all out because I think we may be heading for some planned famines. Okay? Uh, the whole thing, you know, Ukraine is one of the big breadbaskets of Europe. And they've just wiped out most of their crops there along with everything else. So it's going to hurt a lot of people, especially in um, Africa, Northern Africa, and, uh, and throughout the European um, area there. So uh, I wanted to bring that all out because, uh, you know, prepare, okay? There's going to be famines, there's going to be earthquakes, and we're going to get the earthquakes next, there's going to be wars, and how do we prepare for all that stuff? Jesus said it all happened, and it's happening now. So point number one, Jesus warned of famines. Point number two, Jesus warned of earthquakes in verse seven. There will be famines and earthquakes in many parts of the world. Uh, one thing that surprised me, 19 of the 20th strongest earthquakes 
that uh, they've ever recorded have happened since 1900. Now, there have been others years before that where it maybe even killed more. Uh, you know, in Haiti in 2010, uh, they had, uh, what, it was 300,000, wasn't it, killed there? Uh, they really don't know how many, they're, that's what they're guessing. And uh, China, now this is back 1,500, and I'm getting some of the really old ones there. Uh, they had 830,000 killed. And in Indonesia, this is 2004, they had 228,000 killed. So, um, as it, you know, all the big ones are, are, aren't just today, but there's been more and more big ones since 1900. Um, so China, China's had some of the worst uh, earthquakes. Uh, Turkey is always a hotbed of earthquakes. Haiti, Indonesia, Armenia, Japan, and uh, go down the list. Uh, we talked about all the earthquakes on the West Coast, but really we're way down the list of serious earthquakes. So we're very blessed. However, what did it say here? There would be earthquakes in many parts of the world. Most people in California talk about, oh, there's going to be a big one out here. I, our son lives in Redding, and uh, there's a mountain range there. I said, you should get out of there. He said, oh, no, no, there's a mountain range there. The, that other part of the uh, mountain, it'll probably drop off the sea, but we won't. Well, <coughs> I hope you're right, okay? Anyway, what I'm trying to say is that we're probably going to face more and more earthquakes coming down the road. We're probably going to face more and more famines, and we're going to face more and more wars, and that's what it says here. But notice, you say, oh, this is all the end time stuff, but uh, verse 8, but all this is only the first of the birth pains with more to come. Okay? We can talk about all that's going on, there's going to be more to come. Now, point number three, God uses earthquakes in the book of Acts, one of my favorite passages is where Paul and Silas are in prison. Remember they um, um, delivered that one girl of a demon and the people that are getting, making money off her uh, through, got them thrown in the jail. They got beat up uh, and they're in prison. Around, verse 25 in Acts 16 says, Around midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God and the other prisoners were listening. I often bring that out. When you're going through a, a trial, try praising and worshiping the Lord and singing hymns, okay? That's what they did. They're, they're bleeding in there. They're in bond or things uh, uh, that they can't get out of, okay? Uh, okay. Suddenly there was a massive earthquake and the prison was shaken to its foundation. All the doors immediately flew open and the chains of every prisoner fell off. <laughs> The jailer woke up to see the prison doors wide open. He assumed the prisoners had escaped, so he drew the sword to kill himself. <laughs> I love that story because notice, God uses earthquakes. And he's still using earthquakes. Now, this is a massive earthquake, and you know the jail was often under the ground. And what did it do? It shook everything. It's a massive earthquake. But it shook enough to open the prison doors and the Knock all the chains off every prison. You know, that's our God. He can use anything, and he can use earthquakes. So, in this particular case, he did. And a lot of times it talks about earthquakes in the Bible. Uh, point number four, God defend, defeats his enemies with earthquakes. Ezekiel 38 and 39, where I'd really like to zero in a little bit. We talk about this passage a lot, too. Because uh, this is when Gog and Magog and all these other nations that lined with them, Iran and Libya and, uh, and uh, Turkey, all lined up to attack Israel. And they, they're all coming down there. And what does it say? In verse uh, 18. But this is what the Sovereign Lord says when Gog invades the land of Israel. Now, this is talks earlier about after they come back from captivity, which is it not. But this is what the Sovereign Lord says, when God invades the land of Israel, my fury will boil over. In my jealousy and blazing anger, 
I promise a mighty shaking in the land of Israel on that day. All the living things, the fish of the sea, the birds of the sky, the animals of the field, and the small animals that scurry along the ground, and all the people on earth will quake in terror at my presence. Mountains will be thrown down, cliffs will crumble, walls will fall to the earth. I'll summon the sword against you on all the hills of Israel, says the sovereign Lord. Your men will turn their swords against each other. Another goes on and on, and uh, it also talks then, it's going to take them seven months to clean up the mess and bury all the people who died. But what happens? They come against Israel, and God himself fights. And part of what he fights, and the way he starts the fight, is with an earthquake. He often uses earthquakes, I believe, to literally shake people up. And it does shake people up. In this case, he uses it to judge Gog and Magog. And uh, as they come down to attack Israel, God is using it to judge them and to... Um, to really wipe them all out. Now, you got this in Ezekiel 38 and 39, and some people say that could happen at any time. The nations that it talks about in chapter 38 are the very nations that are now very anti-Israel and would be willing to come down. And why did they come down? I'm not sure, or when? I'm not sure either. But if you get, have your Bibles, in Revelation, the sixth chapter, I want to bring some other things out here and bring things together. The sixth seal will include an earthquake. Point number five, the sixth seal will include an earthquake. Chapter six, verse 12. Uh, I watched as the Lamb broke the sixth seal, and there was a great earthquake. The sun became as dark as black cloth, and the moon became as red as blood. And then the stars of the sky fell to the earth like green flag figs falling from a tree shaken by the strong wind. And the sky was rolled up like scroll, and all the mountains and islands were moved from their places. Okay? Now that's the sixth seal. Then if you drift, point number six is uh, the sixth trumpet will include another earthquake. Revelation 11. Beginning with 13th verse. At the same time, now this is when the two witnesses were, or were killed and then raised to death, all part of the uh, sixth seal, or sixth trumpet, excuse me. At that time, verse 13, there was a terrible earthquake that destroyed a tenth of the city. 7,000 people died in the earthquake, and everyone else was terrified and gave glory to God in heaven. The second terror is past, but look, the third terror is coming. And then, in Revelation, the uh, 18th verse, point number seven, the seventh bowl is the worst earthquake at all. Seventh bowl, Revelation 16, verse 18. Uh, let's get 17 first. Then the seventh angel poured out his bowl into the air, and a mighty shout came from the throne in his temple, saying, It is finished. Then the thunder clashed and rolled, and lightning flashed, and a great earthquake struck the worst since people were placed on the earth. The great city of Babylon split into three <coughs> sections. We talked about this in Bible study uh, a couple weeks ago. The what I'm trying to sh uh, point out here is the sixth seal, the sixth trumpet, and the seventh bowl all have massive earthquakes, okay? And you wonder, is it the same one? Now, some people say, when they interpret the revelation, they say, well, the first we gotta go through the seals, and then we go through the trumpets, and then we go through the bowls. Others say that seals are a long-range thing, maybe over a number of years, maybe over even a couple generations. The trumpets are a shorter range, and the bowls are the last three and a half years of the tribulation. Now, I kind of go along with that, and I kind of wonder if all three of these earthquakes that are talked about here are the same one. That's my thinking. Whether it is or not, and some people say Ezekiel 38 and 39, the, earth, the giant earthquake there is also the same one as here, and when all the, them, or all the countries come to against Israel, that will be the end of everything. I kind of follow with that too, that's a possibility. I've always thought Ezekiel 38 and 39 has to happen before the tribulation. I'm not so convinced anymore. Now, it don't really matter, you know, you can 
go wherever you want on this. What I want to say is that uh, Jesus said in the last days there would be all kinds of earthquakes. And that's just the beginning of sorrows. And we're seeing that, okay? So what happened there in Turkey uh, could happen in many other places. I don't doubt it will happen uh, in more places. So what do we do about it? What do we do about it? How can we prepare for something like that? I would say the biggest thing you need to prepare is your own heart and get right with the Lord. If there's things you need to repent of, if there are things you need to uh, get right with the Lord, you need to do it, okay? Uh, I'm excited about what's going on right now. Karen mentioned the whole thing of uh, that movie. Please go if you can. Uh, it, it, it was excellently done. Uh, the, uh, maybe just a couple things about the movie. Uh, they wanted a, a, a real drug addict to play the part of the drug addict that gets saved. And so there was an actor that uh, was, um, they knew was a, had become a drug addict. He was the one, uh, what was the movie that um, uh, uh, the young kids playing? Uh, um, Mighty Ducks. Mighty Ducks, Mighty Ducks. The kid that played the goalie in the Mighty Ducks, he's heavy, heavy kid, you know. Uh, after playing that, he ended up going to drugs. And so the producers of this movie wanted him to play the part of the drug addict because he has, he has been coming. He, was a, he is a drug addict, okay? And so they wanted to make it more real. So they had him play it. And uh, through it, they pray for him and uh, he uh, gets saved. In real life, he also said, when it got all done, I want to give my life to the Lord. Praise God. Now this is the kid that played in Mighty Ducks, the goalie. He gave his heart to the Lord while he was filming this. He said, then I want to be baptized too. So if you go to the movie, that kind of gives you a little bit. The pastor on the movie that plays the pastor, uh, after the movie got all done, he committed his life to the Lord. So, uh, Is that Kelsey Grammer? Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. So, yeah, it kind of interesting. But we got that movie coming out this time, and then the whole thing that's happening uh, in college campuses, and not only college campuses and high school campuses, it's happening in churches too. You're hearing more and more things going on in churches, and I'm excited about what's going on. But we need to get our hearts right. There's you know, going to be more and more earth here. There's going to be more and more problems. And then, ah, oh, we live up here, no problem whatsoever. Hey, don't count on it. You know, God can take any of us at any time. And how many people have been taken lately with car accidents through ice and one thing or another. The thing is, what I'm trying to say is, we're heading into some really tough times. There's going to be earthquakes, there's going to be famine, there's going to be war, but there's also going to be revival. And I want to be a part of that. I want to turn my heart over. And the only way you're going to do that is get right with the Lord and just repent of everything that may be holding you back, whatever it may be. It may be fear, it may be um, some drug or you know some thought pattern or some uh, thing you're in that you, you know is not pleasing the Lord. So what I'm saying is simply this. We're heading just on one side. Some earthquakes, some famines, some wars. On the other side, I see us heading into a glorious time where people are going to get saved, and it needs to start with us. It get a fire in us. Hey, guess what? It's going to touch other lives. We had someone here yesterday that uh, part of our congregation. Uh, and I won't say who it is because I didn't talk to him beforehand, but. Uh, they led someone to the Lord yesterday. Just got a person on their heart, went over, talked to them, led them to the Lord. That's what God's going to do with us, with us if we're willing, if we're uh, obedient to him, and uh, if we get right with ourselves and, you know, repent of everything. It starts with repentance and getting totally right with the Lord. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus that we'll all get right with you. If there's anything in our life that's holding us back from really serving you, Lord, we confess it before you. We renounce it. We don't want it in our lives. We want to be part of what's going on in the world. We don't want part of those wars and famines and earthquakes. We want to be part of your great revival. In Jesus' name, we thank you for the opportunity. Oh, may it not pass us by. In Jesus' name, amen.